Oh, g'day. Didn't see you there. Well, welcome along to this video on the impact statement where we're just going to break down uh, the really key parts to the essay itself. Uh, what can be very confusing is um, the whole selecting a topic and relating it to your product and so forth. So we're just going to break that down and uh, ensure that you really understand what you need to include in this impact statement. All right. So if we have a look at the assessment sheet here, the impact statement, your impact statement should be concise and demonstrate your ability to investigate and analyze the impact of your product on individuals, society, and or the environment. So in there, it's really important that we're looking at how the impact um, that you're looking at uh, has an impact on an individual, society, or the environment. Okay. Now you could do one of those, you could do two of those, you could do all three. But the thing is the assessment criteria is looking for how you you investigate and analyze the impact on those three things. Okay, so you need to be using the specific language. So if you're looking at how your it's impacting your topic is impacting the individual, you need to use individual as the language in there. Okay, so that it's really explicit about what you're talking about. You know about the length of the essay and so forth. So basically, you've got to work out what your impact's going to be. And you want to be making sure you choose one of the topics that is really um, specific to you and your major product. Okay? We've gone through the structure of the essay. Okay? We've gone through, you know, how we want to have a hook and so forth. But what I want to do is I want to look at now breaking down the key requirements of this task. Okay, so what impact does your product have on either the individual society or the environment? Okay. What can happen is people can select one of the four topics, you know, automated technology, um, resourcing a timber, blah, blah, blah. They can select one of those topics and then go and write a really good essay about that particular topic. All right, and they go into a really excellent depth on, you know, let's say automated technology about what's out there and so forth. What we cannot forget and what we cannot work away from is how it connects to your product. And that's why this little diagram's here. You need to have how it connects to your product, what you're doing for your major product and the topic, they need to connect, they need to add together to complete the impact statement. You can't have one or the other, you need them to come together. So we're looking at the impact around a topic with the specific um, idea to connect that to what we are going to do for our major um, product. Because remember, this impact statement is part of your folio. It's at uh, it's you know it's sort of at the end of the investigation just before you start planning, and what it's looking at is getting you to look deeper into issues or impacts out there around what we're doing to give you a better idea and a um, and a good head to make a informed decision. That's what we want you to do. We want you to find out all this information in your folio, and then when you start planning your product, to have an informed decision. And this essay is no different. This is helping you do that. So you need to decide on what the impact or impacts are that you're looking at, and positive or negative, or it can be both or um, one or the other or both. Okay, but remember you're looking at impact. All right. So with the with the thought in mind that we need to connect it to our product that we're going to be making okay which is 50% well it's part of the 50% practical assessment um for the major minor product okay so introduction hook the reader in i'll just add a full stop in there and there and i'll just save that <laughs> okay so hook the reader in so i think most of you understand that introduce the key points this is a common um mistake and again this is part of that essay structure that we taught uh, in depth about in class and in the videos and things like that. You need to introduce your key points that you're going to talk about, so the impacts that you've you've found out about, and do that in chronological order. So the first paragraph, 
that would be the first thing you'd introduce, second paragraph, second thing, and so forth. Next thing, this is the really important thing. You need to link this to your major product. Connect the topic that you've chosen with your major product. So, you know, if you're looking at um, resourcing timber, because you're making a timber product, you are going to need to resource the timber. So that's why you're looking into uh, any impacts around resourcing uh, timber for a project. Okay, you're linking that. If you're looking at the treatments and chemicals used to protect timber uh, products, okay, you're looking at that because you are going to protect your timber product uh, at the end of your um, at the end of the year in some form. Okay, however you go about that, and this is to help you make the right decision for when you do that. So you need to connect the topic with your major product. It's also good to give a bit of context for the essay. So give a reasoning for why you need to know about it. So when you link it to your major product, you know, you're giving context there of, of why you're doing this essay. That it's not just a random essay smacked into your folio. That it has a reason. It's there for the specific purpose to inform you um, and for you to analyse what impacts are there. And then when you go to make the decision about how you, say, um, treat your timber at the end of it, you're making a really smart and informed decision. Okay, so context and linking to major product, really, really important. Uh, then I've just broken down the, the four topics you could choose from uh, to sort of help you, give you a bit of an idea of what how you can go about. Now, this is just an idea. You don't have to necessarily follow this, but um, you need to be able to um, have something similar. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit so we can see that clearer. So automated technology. Investigation on what it is and the role it plays in the furniture industry. So again we want to relate it to what we're doing and the industry that we are involved in which is the furniture, kitchen furniture industry. Okay so find out, you know, automated technology, find out what it is and how, what role it plays in that. Then looking at the analysis of, of some positive impacts on the individual, so looking at employees in that industry and also society. So when we say society, in this context, we're meaning sort of like business and the economy. So um, we're looking at that sort of lens. Uh, and then the same with the negative, look at the impacts it has on the same two things. So in terms of um, automated technology, the individual, the employee, how is this technology impacting on the employees in the industry okay um, both positive and negative you know there's you know plenty of opportunities for upskilling and and um, developing new um, skills for your employment but then on the other side there's a reduction in um, employment opportunities because instead of having five people uh, making kitchen cabinets uh, you have a machine that will do all the cutting and drilling and routing and everything and basically one person knocking it all together after it's been um, manufactured. So you, it's reducing the amount of people that are needed. So there's positives and negatives. The same with business. Um, you know, it's helping a business to produce more at a higher standard so f and so on. But then it's also uh, businesses are looking to take their uh, factories and manufacturing plants overseas because it's cheaper again to to do that somewhere else therefore having an impact on the local economy and and so, and so forth so lots of issues there to talk about impacts resourcing and timber so investigation on what it is again what role it plays in the furniture industry it's a pretty major role obviously um, so there a good way to go, you could go, is you know the analysis of negative impacts on the the environment. So looking at things like deforestation, illegal felling, uh, global warming, they're all you know you don't have to cover all of those. You could look at one or the other or a couple, or whatever. But there are some ideas for you to go with. Um, analysis of positive impacts on the environment. So there are things these days called plantation forests, where um, and there's a lot of them in South Australia alone, where um, Trees are grown specifically for the purpose of cutting down and using that for timber and all the products that stem from that. So, um, you know, we accept that we need timber. So there's these plantation forests around South Australia, Australia, the world, that gives the opportunity for that to happen. 
So there's stuff you can look at that. And also you could then look at, you know, South Australia in particular, um, you know, the analysis of positive impacts on society. So looking at local industry, you know, the economy, employment, um, there's lots of opportunities for jobs in this area in South Australia alone. So lots of things to talk about there. But again, when we're an analysing these impacts, they're really specifically relating to um, the field, the topic we're looking at, but also uh, it's relating to um, our product. Okay, so we're getting all these points, we're understanding what some of the impacts are around these topics, then at the end we can make a decision that's going to have a uh, the best sort of outcome. Flat pack furniture, knockdown fittings, so what it is again and the role it plays in the industry, positive impacts on the individual, so the consumer, so you could look at the individual from a consumer point of view, the customer, and then society looking at business economy side of things again. Um, so, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, transportation, price and things like that and availability because of flat pack furniture, knockdown fittings, you know, those are very easy for the consumer um, and makes life very easy for businesses like IKEA. They can mass produce things, send it out, they reduce costs in production, um, re reduce cost in delivery, all that sort of thing, um, and storage, all that kind of thing. Um, so it has lots of positive impacts. Negative impacts on the individual, you know, co you know, it's the whole quality versus quantity sort of thing, you know, and also versus price. Do you want to pay a little for something you can get instantly that might last a little while, or do you want to pay a lot of money for a decent bit of furniture that might last a lifetime? Uh, you know, it's that sort of, uh, we're looking at that sort of, um, the disposable lifestyle is a really big point around this area. You know, these days there's a very much a disposable um, sort of lifestyle with uh, people, you know, get something that will last once it's broken or doesn't work or is no longer needed, it's thrown out. So then there are some environmental issues around that if you wanted to take that line. Last one, chemicals and treatment used in timber production. Okay, so investigation on what it is and what role it plays. So it's a big role. You know, we need to protect our timber, but then there's a lot of negative impacts around health for the employee, okay? Um, and so welfare, oh, I don't want to do that, I wanted to make it bold. Welfare, health and safety uh, is what WHS stands for, and for some reason I've lost my H there. Let me just do it again. So welfare, health and safety is about um, WHS, so you know, you're looking at the impacts it has and what's important and so forth. Let me just close out of that. Um, and then the last one is the analysis of the negative impacts on the environment, so use and disposal of chemicals and treatments. So there's a lot of impacts there to think about when we're doing this topic. All right. So there's just a breakdown of those different topics. Um, and then the last part is the conclusion. So this is where you need to summarize and link your key findings um, to your major product by stating the impacts, positive or negative, that you will now need to consider and be mindful of when planning the related section. Dependent on topic, so dependent on which one of these four you did in the folio. So what I mean by that is you need to go, these are the key things I've found out and now because I've found those things out, when I plan to, say, finish my cabinet, um, I'm going to be mindful of those health and safety regulations that are out there to protect me from um, the overexposure to a chemical. All right. So things like, you know, I'm going to ensure that I follow the correct WHS guidelines, like, for example, um, wear safety glasses a, a um, mask and have the extraction on, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so that's really, really important. And then just, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's a pos positive or negative, it's all about connecting it back to your product, your major product that you're going to make because this is in the folio. So remember, you need to do that connection. This is the connection to the product is where most people sort of um, uh, go a bit away from where they need to be. Uh, so no new information is not to, 
uh, sorry, new information is not to be introduced in a conclusion. So if you find yourself talking about something new, you either get rid of it or you look to create a paragraph in the actual body. So just before we finish up, I just really want to remind you of this part here. The connection of the product that you're going to be making and your topic. Those two combined create the impact statement. Okay, One without the other won't do it. We need to um, have that connection, that context. You know, It's not a random essay. It's there for you to build knowledge and understanding around a, an impact that will um, have some sort of connection to your product. All right? So that's why those options are there. It's not just one topic. It's so that you can choose something that you think you need to know more about. So hopefully this has helped, but um, please ask any questions at all, and, uh, and best of luck with the essay.